Okay guys, so I am still working on and playing with the Ontario RTAC 2. And in this video, I thought I would discuss some of the mods that I've done to this RTAC 2 and to kind of discuss how I have made this a little bit better of a survival knife than what you might get out of box. So let's jump right into this. As always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. Okay, so let's talk about the most obvious of modifications, and that is firstly the sheath. And I don't necessarily have any huge problems with the stock sheath from Ontario, but it is this cheap nylon kind of sheath that is not very good, and especially for the price point that you can get in RTAC 2, I think you really owe it to yourself to get a custom sheath, because usually you can get a custom sheath for around $30 to $50, depending on what you want, you know, what coloration, and different kind of uh, customizing points that you are aiming for and uh, I think that that's the first and most important modification that I made and that I think a lot of people should make because you can really up the quality of your tool by having a solid sheath like this and it's not just what I mean by increasing the quality of the tool isn't so much that you're increasing the physical quality of the knife like obviously the knife stays the same but what you're doing is you're allowing a more secure you know sheath but also a more versatile sheath so you know as you can see I have rigged this one up with a lot of paracord that can be used at any time for survival purposes or this can also help me attach it to a belt or as you can see here it can help attach different survival items that you can utilize with your knife increasing its functionality so without getting too gimmicky I think a sheath a proper sheath can really help increase the ability that your knife already has naturally with it so also like I said it in addition to the custom sheath, I put on a little bit of extra paracord. This paracord up here is really more for rigging, so you know I can add things to this sheath, but the actual paracord that I have for use is here. And then on the back, I have you know obviously the same paracord rigged up, but I have my ferro rod attached, and I have it kind of woven through this band of the paracord, but I also have it tied off right here, so in case it decides to pop free, it's never going to be actually free free until I truly want my ferro rod and I'm not going to pull it quite off for this but that's that and so for the ferro rod this is a gobspark ferro rod they're not my absolute favorite but it's a nice thick I think this is a 5 16 inch thick ferro rod plenty big plenty meaty and then what I did with it was I just took some paracord strung it through the or kind of laid it down, wrapped a lot of duct tape, orange duct tape over it. So this is a very high-vis package, as you guys can probably see. It's very overexposed, but it's a very high-vis kind of package so that my ferro rod is never misplaced. And I did this primarily because this is just a ferro rod itself, so obviously it can get lost rather easily. So I have some blaze orange tape on there and a very bright paracord lanyard. So like I said, I just string that through my uh, paracord kind of rigging and that helps keep everything together and uh, yeah, keeps it from just flopping around like a dead fish. Okay, so what did I do to the blade? Honestly, not a whole lot. It is a little bit used looking, but first thing I did was I added a lanyard and of course in the color to match the paracord on the sheath. But this simple lanyard just allows you to slip your hand through and, you know, get a good grip so you're not going to lose the uh, blade when you're chopping. Of course, I do a bit of chopping with this, so it makes sense to have a lanyard or a functional lanyard for that. And then the only other mod I did, as you guys can probably see here, is that I cleaned off the whole back spine. So with this blade, it comes entirely coated in this kind of like powder coating, truck bed liner coating, whatever it is. And of course that coating, similar to any SC blade, uh, does not allow you to strike a ferro rod off the spine. And in fact, even after cleaning off the coating, I did have to kind of regrind the spine because it was still a little bit rough. There were some chatter marks and it was still a little bit rounded. So I ground the spine down just a little bit and sharpened it, of course, so that now, um, hopefully, so that it will throw sparks pretty well. As you guys can see here, it will throw sparks very well. So um, that's why I sharpened it up. 
and uh, got it nice and nice sharp. So that is what I did to the spine. And like I said, I just ended up doing the whole spine. Now, um, I do mean intentionally or in the beginning for just this area to really be sharpened and ground. Um, but I ended up doing the whole spine uh, for just one reason. And that is really so that I can use the back of this blade as a scraper. So if I want to preserve the edge or if I don't necessarily want to use the edge, I can um, use this in a way or in a manner to scrape with the, just the spine. So if I'm trying to just scrape the bark off of a piece of wood, or if I'm just trying to make some fine powder for wood, or wood powder or whatnot, you know, I can have this whole back of the spine, which is very long and very useful, to just scrape wood or scrape whatever. So that is what I originally didn't quite, you know, I just intended for this to be a ferro rod scraper or striker, but I ended up grounding the whole spine so that I can use it for, like I said, uh, bark stripping and stuff like that. Okay, so that's why I originally did that with the spine um, and what it allows me to do with the functionality or increasing the functionality of the blade. Now, as far as the handle, the handle has been left stock, though I may at some point put grooves in the micarta. I'm not 100% sure yet. My ultimate trepidation to doing that right now is I just want to make sure that whatever I do, whenever I modify any of my knives, is I try to do it as professionally as possible. So I don't want to necessarily just take, you know, a Dremel to my micarta handle and make them look all trashy and ugly because uh, I, I want some form and function with my tools so you know that's why I ground out all the chatter marks on the spine is so that it would look nice and clean and professional so you know I try whenever I modify a knife not to just modify it so that it's purely functional but so that it also still looks good you know so it looks professionally done so I may in time add some traction to the handle because when this uh, handle handle is wet it's still pretty tacky and pretty good but it is a little bit slick so that's what I'm doing that's what I'm thinking about doing for the handle but we'll see what I end up doing uh, like I said I just primarily want to not mess up the handle and make it look like a piece of trash so anyways guys that is my mods that I've done to the Artec 2 and to the sheath and the custom sheath itself so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you enjoyed seeing some of these modifications as always guys god bless and i'm out